I have played around and tested this Jackson GS 2020 dinghy for a couple of weeks now. And now it's great time for me to provide you my review and opinion about this scooter. And hopefully this video helps you to decide if this scooter is for you or if it's not for you. And this video is not sponsored by anyone. I bought this scooter with my own money. Let's get started. <laughs> You can check the latest price of this scooter by clicking the link in the description. It helps me out and I can produce more scooter content and it adds no extra cost for you. You can see the structure of this video over there. You can use the time codes of this video to jump to the section you want to see. We will start with the overview of this scooter. This section has really nice looking black shading finish on the body and this art stopping. It's usually related to acoustic quitters, semi hollow body and hollow body quitters, but I think that the Jackson means here that the top of the body is not flat. It has these curves as you can see on this video. Here you can see the backside of this quitter. Looks great in my opinion and also you can see that contour. It's always a nice thing when the quitter aims to be really comfortable to play. This scooter has really nice looking and actionable two-point tremolo. Two-point tremolo just means that the tremolo is attached to the body with two screws. And here you can see a small flaw in finish. In unboxing video I say that this is a stain, but I think that this is not a stain. It looks like the fretboard is worn out a little bit on this point. And this could be that this, when they finish at the fretboard, this had some kind of maybe dust or something else on the fretboard and the finish didn't stick on that point. And that's why it looks like it has been worn out. That's just my guess. I could be wrong, but it's definitely a small flaw in finish. And here this Jackson trademark, the Sark fin fret inlays. And the fingerboard radius of this scooter, this is really nice in my opinion. This has a compounding radius. It's 12 inches on closer to nut and it goes to 16 inches when you go down the fretboard and this is really nice thing on the cuidar on this price range. It kind of makes playing some chords easier when you are playing closer to nut but when you want to shred it's easier with the flatter fretboard. And then the pickups. This scooter has two Jackson high output humpback and pit pickups. And for this price, under 200 US dollars, I think that you get amazing value with these pickups. But more about this in the electronics section. And then the tone and volume knobs. I think that the looks of these, they fit the scooter's overall look very nicely. And kind of standard, basic looking three way switch. The stock of this scooter, it's the shape of it, it's not my dream electric scooter's headstock, but it, it looks cool in my opinion. Nice looking headstock and overall design, the Jackson logo, black finish and uh, white edges. I think that this looks really great. Tuners, you get really nice value for money with these tuners. These are included on many hundreds of dollars more expensive Jackson scooters too. And this scooter stays in tune really well, especially when I keep the price of this scooter in mind. And then the neck. This scooter has maple neck with satin finish and this neck feels really smooth. I would be blind tested with this neck. I wouldn't guess that this is the neck of the under $200 electric scooter. I would maybe guess $600, $500 maybe. And the shape of this neck, it's not mentioned on many music retailers' sites, but on Jackson's site they state that this has bolt on maple speed neck. And the speed is one of the Jackson's neck shape, so I would assume that this has this speed neck shape. And in my opinion it's kind of close to maybe D-shape or thin D-shape. It's 
really comfortable but it also has some downsides but i will talk more about those in the playability section and when you want to put the tremolo arm on it has a little bit different locking mechanism than for example ibanitz and squire guitar that i am also going to include in this best guitars under 200 us dollars series you only need to press this down and then there's some kind of gloves inside the tremolo bar which will lock this arm down and also when you want to remove it you just need to press it down and then pull it out of the hole now it's time to look at the inside of the back plates we can see the electronics of the tone and volume knobs and uh, electronics of the three-way switch and also the tremor block and the springs that's it to it and all the solderings seems to be fine all is well at that set and the work is pretty clean in my opinion it's nice that they have wrapped those wires together so those won't make any noises when you are moving the quitter because there is a lot of room inside the back plate that covers these electronics There is some extra wiring over here, but not much. But I think that if you want to, for example, change the tone and volume knobs for different looking, there is enough wire to do so. And tremolo plug seems to be fine. No cracks or anything like that. And three springs connected to the tremolo plug. This scooter didn't have any extra springs coming with it and then there is the ground wire and the soldering with this is also fine and it is as well attached and as you can see the cable jack is also easily accessible with this scooter if you maybe need to fix something or change something i also measured the resistance of the pickups this gives us some indication how many wraps of wire is around the coils of the pickups and when there is more wraps of wire the pickups will generate higher voltage and output here is the neck pickup it has less resistant than for example ASPL DEC 10s neck pickup and then the middle positioning both pickups on and then the bridge pickup and from all the access with humbucker pickups from this under 200 dollars price range this jackson's bridge pickup has the most resistance and i tested the frets to see if there are some uneven frets and this had some i didn't face any fret bus issues with this guitar but the first and it was the seventh fret were higher than the frets between those two frets but as i said this didn't cause any real problems for me and also the 7th and the 16th fret were higher than the frets between those but again these didn't cause any fret bus for me i also measured how wide this scooter's neck is not wide and the width of the neck from the 12th fret The looks of this guitar. For me it's really hard to point out any real flaws on the looks of this guitar. The headstock, maybe it's not my dream guitar's headstock as I mentioned it in the overview section, but still it looks great. Nice looking headstock. This finish, the neck looks great. The black always suits a guitar in my opinion. I like the knobs, they fit this guitar really well the switch is kind of basic but it almost always is the white edges of the fretboard so with this black look and this satin wood finish on the neck really well i would love to see jackson adding something over here this looks kind of empty almost nothing but yeah i would love to see something over here maybe the model of this scooter or something else but still keeping the price of this scooter in mind i would rate the looks of this axe 4.8 out of 5. 
10 the hardware quality of this scooter and I'm not including electronics on today's I will talk more about those and the electronics section. The hardware also it's really hard to point out any real flaws with this scooter. Strap locks are a little bit different than the, with the other scooters in this under $200 electric scooter series that I'm producing at the moment. The strap is a little bit harder to remove with these Jackson's strap locks. Really minor con and it's not really a quality thing, but it's small minus in hardware, but really tiny minus. And the tuners, great quality. Overall, the frets, tremolo bar, and the tremolo plug also great. I would rate the hardware of this scooter 4.9 out of 5. 10 the electronics. All the soldering's great, well attached, clean job. You have some extra wiring if you need to do some fixing or change, you want to change tone knobs or something else like that. And the pickups, really high value for the money. Great pickups. It's more about those on the sound section. Overall, I would rate the electronics 5 out of 5. I just can't find any real cons on the electronics of this scooter. Then the build quality and finish quality. This scooter has a couple flaws in the finish. First, on the strap lock, this padding between the strap lock and the body. And this padding on this strap lock, it's great, but over here it's kind of, they have rusted a little bit and the padding is kind of off and sticks a little bit. But I didn't notice this immediately, only today when I was filming this. So it's really small flaw. And this one I noticed it immediately. This little scratch on the fretboard, I saw it earlier. I'm almost 100% sure that if you are going to buy this scooter, you won't have this issue. This is probably only um, this my copy of this scooter. But still, I'm going to return this scooter. The reason is because I usually sell my gear on the second hand market and then buy some new gear so that I can make more content on here YouTube and on my blog especially. So that's why I'm going to send this scooter back because if I'm going to sell this at some point it's harder to sell with this flow and also the price will be lower with this. But otherwise overall finish is really nice. No real issues. Only these two small flaws. This scooter has some uneven frets. I think that it was a 11th and the second fret are and the first fret are really a little bit higher than the rest of the frets over here but even though this scooter has really low action no fret bus so it's not a huge problem in my opinion i would rate the overall build and finish quality three out of five then the playability the playability of this scooter has really tiny flaw for me and I will talk about that first. This compounding radius and the speed neck is otherwise really awesome. But for me, doing bar records on closer to not starting with the first and the second fret, it's a little bit harder than with the other quitters on this price range and this under 200 bucks electric quitter series. And I can imagine that, especially for beginners, bar records are always a little bit tricky, but with this electric quitter, a little bit more tricky than, for example, with the Ibanez and the Squire quitters on this same price range. This is only small flaw in the playability. Otherwise, the body of the quitter, the contour here on the back side, feels great, connects you with the quitter. You can feel the vibration of the quitter when you are playing it. And you have kind of contour over here, lots of room to play with these lower frets if you want to shred. This scooter had really low action out of the box and these jumbo frets make playing really effortless. And you don't need to press the strings of this scooter much because of these jumbo frets and the low action. And the speed neck, it's speedy. You can play really fast with this scooter. And the overall shading finish, it's really smooth. Yeah, as I mentioned it, if I would be blind tested with this neck and this scooter, I wouldn't guess that this is under 200 bucks. Overall, with that really tiny flaw with the bar records, for me, maybe you don't have that problem, but I would imagine that if you are a beginner or you have even smaller hands than me, 
power cords with this can be a little bit harder than with some other electric guitars. I would rate the playability of this guitar 4.8 out of 5. Now I'm going to compare this Jackson JS22 to some other kind of similar guitars. First I'm going to compare it to this Jackson Dingy GS32 Q. So maybe you think that maybe I should spend a little bit more to invest to a little bit more expensive guitar and you are thinking about it. I can drop 400 bucks to this and here is that kind of option for you but let's see how these are different from each other both have 24 jumbo frets exactly the same pickups bodywood JS32 has popular body with quilted maple top so you have slightly different looks you can decide which one is better and maybe maple can give some brightness into your tower and both have compounding radiuses exactly the same and then the price 199 and 399 big difference then the bridge you get two point tremolo arm with gs 2020 but you get floyd rose licensed jackson double locking tremolo bridge with gs 32 so if you want a floyd rose scooter then yeah this jackson might be a great option if you like the looks of it the quilted maple top and then the tuners both have same tuners and these are pretty solid tuners in my opinion but you can see that you get really nice pickups with this JS2020 compounding radius and good quality tuners so here price difference is not my opinion justified of course the quilted maple is more expensive and it takes more time to construct and you get that Floyd Rose bridge I think that this price difference is not worth it but I can say that this Jackson JS2020 when you compare it to this more expensive gooder, it looks pretty great. Then I will compare this JS22 to ESPL DDAC 10, which is on the same price range and it's designed for metal. Jackson Dinky, jumbo frets, ES10, 24 extra jumbo frets. Both are quite effortless to play, but when you are pressing the strings from the first and the second fret with JS2020, you get sharp notes pretty easily. Here the ES10 takes the edge. It doesn't have that issue. It could be my fault, but on my testing that happened. But both are comfortable to play as it comes to frets. And the pickups here, the JS22 definitely gets the edge. I think it has a lot better pickups and these same pickups are included in many hundreds of dollars more expensive Jackson Gooders. But with EC10, it has kind of budget pickups. I couldn't find that these would be included in any more expensive ESP LTD quitters. I think that these EC10 pickups are worse than those Jackson high output humbuckers. These Jackson pickups they give better and meaner distortion and also better cleans and grindstones in my opinion. Bodywood this doesn't make a lot of difference. Maybe if I had to pick, I would pick the popular. And fretboard radius, CS2020 again takes the edge here. It's more comfortable, in my opinion. But the EC10 is about 14 says fretboard. It, it's not bad either. Price, exactly the same. I live in a Scandinavian region. And here, Jackson CS2020 is for some reason a little bit more expensive, like 5 or 10 bucks. The next shape. Both of these are comfortable and feel really great, but this Jackson's neck is more closer to the D-shape in my opinion and this EC10 has this thin U. And the tuners, both of these scooters have really high quality tuners for the price. Both of these tuners are included in many hundreds of dollars more expensive models. Even though you get the kickback with EC10, JS2020's pickups and the compound radius this Jackson just takes the edge here. It sounds better and it's a little bit more comfortable to play in my opinion. And now it's time for some sound samples. I'm going to play some clean, crunch and distorted stuff for you so that you can check out how this guitar sounds. So let's check these sound samples out. <laughs>
Thank you. 
sound. I really like the sound and tones of this guitar. Of course, this is not the most versatile guitar, but this is built for metal. But this is more versatile than, for example, the ESP LTD EC10, which cost the same, but it has a lot worse pickups. Those pickups don't suck, but it, those are a lot worse than with this one. You can get really mean distorted metal tones with this guitar, especially with the bridge pickup. I think that it offers you really great metal tones, especially. But the grunts and clean tones are also pretty great. I think that this is not a one-trick pony. You can play some nice clean intros with this and some rock and maybe blues goes well with this guitar too. But the grunt tones, when you are playing grunt leads, especially those clean grunt type of tones, maybe a little boxed tone in my opinion. But when you turn the distortion on, really thick and warm tones, but still you have some brightness and the tone is clear, it doesn't become too fussy. So I would rate the tones and sound of this guitar overall 4.3 out of 5. But if I would review the tones of this guitar only metal in my mind, the score would be higher. Then the value for money. I think that you get great value for money with this scooter, especially if you want to play metal with your under 200 bucks scooter. No real issues with the hardware, small minuses with the finish, and you are probably not going to face so bad issues that I face it, even though these are not terrible, but still flaws. You get really solid, nice tuners, comfortable to play guitar, and great pickups. I would rate the value for money with this guitar. 4.8 out of 5. The overall score of this axe. Some flaws in build, but this package is really nice. This is my third review with these under $200 scooters, and I think that this is overall the best one. And especially if you are looking for a metal scooter, this is almost perfect for this bracket. The pros of this guitar, really comfortable to play, nice tones with these high value for money pickups, which are included in many hundreds of dollars more expensive Jackson scooters, as also the tuners are great stable, tuner stays tuned well. The looks of the scooter are really nice, hardware is high quality, and the distorted tones with the scooter are awesome for the price. And of course, this tremolo arm adds some versatility onto your playing. And then the cons, some flaws in build, this small scratch over here, and then this padding is kind of off. And then if you are looking for a really versatile guitar and metal is not your favorite gen and you are not going to use a lot of distortion when you are playing, then this is not the best option for you. I would give the overall score for this guitar, keeping the price of this guitar in mind, and that I'm looking for an versatile guitars, and keeping in mind that the fact that probably only I experienced this flaw with this guitar. I would give this guitar a score of 4.2 out of 5. And would I recommend this guitar? If you are looking for an best metal guitar under $200, I think that this is it. And usually if you have some kind of real flaws with the guitar, you can return it for refund. But as I mentioned, that if you are not going to use a lot of distortion, there is better options out there. For example, the Epiphone Special Vintage Edition or Ibanez Geo that I'm going to review soon too. Hopefully this video helped you out. And if you have any questions, leave those in the comments. Also, you can read a text version of this review on my website, buddhaisnextdoor.com. And subscribe for more, lots of more gear reviews upcoming, especially the best electric cooters under $200 video. It's going to be great. And check the latest price of this scooter by clicking the link in the description. It helps me to produce more content and it adds no extra cost for you. I wish you all the best, keep rocking, and hopefully I will see you soon.